Finding the perfect stylist is a difficult journey. Those who follow the channel will know that I've tried a number of them. I think we're up to seven now. But my two favorites are the Samsung S Pen and the Lamy All Star. But neither of them are perfect, and I find myself switching between each of them on a daily basis. But I think those days are finally over. I think I've found the perfect stylus for me. So before I reveal what the stylus is, we should probably talk about what a perfect stylus is. Let's be clear, there is no perfect stylus, but there might be a perfect stylus for you. So let's run through what the criteria for that might be. Firstly, it should feel good. When you pick it up, it's comfortable in your hand and in your grip. You don't have any pressure points of any kind or you don't cramp when you use it. Secondly, it should feel well made. It should be durable and you should be confident that it's gonna last. Honestly, it should be something that you really don't even have to think about anymore. Next up, it should work well with the tablet that you use. It should track well and be reliable. Where you put the pen tip should be where your stroke goes. It should have the features that you need for your tablet, like an eraser, for example. And it should have nibs that work well with the screen texture of your tablet, and you should have a way to replace them reliably. And this last one isn't exactly necessary, but it is a nice to have, which is it looks good. It's aesthetically pleasing to you, and to a certain extent, you feel like it represents you and is an extension of you. This is by no means an exhaustive list, and if you have some ideas for additional criteria that should be in the perfect stylus list, please let me know those down in the comments. With that out of the way, let's get to the actual stylus. So I've got it right here. I have opened this before, but I wanted to give you the full unboxing experience. So let's hop into it. So I did purchase this stylus from Missing Pen, but this video is in no way sponsored and I paid full price for it. So fun fact, I despise Haribo gummy bears, but I still think it's cute that they put them in the bag. Plus they're in German and I think that's pretty cool. All right, so here it is. So for those who haven't figured it out, it is the Kaweco All Sport. It's a German made pen and in this case, I did order it from Germany. I initially had an order from a company in England, but they didn't actually have it in stock. They were awaiting their shipment from Germany. And so I since had to pause on that and was able to get it directly from Germany. But let's open it up and check it out. It comes in this nice metal tin that I'll keep somewhere, but it's not something I'm gonna use every day. All right, it's nice that it's in English and in German. So this pen design was first conceived in 1911, which is pretty wild to think about. So over a hundred years ago. So like I was saying, all aluminum construction, um, that's what this AL stands for. The, the Lamy also has that in its name. The Lamy is the All Star. This is the All Sport. This is a pocket pen that you can take on the go. It has the screw on design so that the top won't come off. And then you post that to the back. It's a little short without the cap. I exclusively use it with the cap. So the thing you'll notice about this pen immediately on picking it up is that it's heavy. It's made from solid aluminum and especially this cap and this barrel um, are, are heavy and it's really well balanced, especially when you post the cap on the back. It, it has great balance. And I think that's probably my biggest criticism on the Lamy is it's not heavy enough in my opinion. So much so that I even added weight to it. We'll see if you can see this. There's a bunch of aluminum foil and a screw in there to try to make the Lamy feel more substantial. And it helps a little bit, but my balance isn't exactly perfect. The fact that this plastic is so light and then this barrel is hollow makes it really challenging to balance after the fact, especially because this plastic piece goes so far into the barrel. The only place you can really put the weight is towards the end and then the pen feels back heavy. The Lamy is actually fairly balanced out of the box but it's just not heavy enough for me. I remember when I went to the Lamy store in New York and I had to ask the salesperson there, this one's plastic, right? And she was like, no, it's aluminum. 
It doesn't necessarily feel aluminum, but it is. The Kaveco, when you pick it up, you know it's made of metal, it feels substantial, and has a premium feel in the hand. The other challenge that I run into with the Lamy is the grip is not particularly comfortable for me. The tri-grip is technically correct, but apparently I didn't learn to grip a pen correctly. So these little ridges actually dig into my fingers and I don't find it particularly comfortable for long periods of time. I've actually taken some sandpaper and smoothed them out and it's quite a bit more comfortable, but I've, but I've come to the conclusion that I would just prefer a rounded grip overall. I enjoy the size of the pen. The grip size is good. It's just these ridges that I find uncomfortable. And I think that's the thing that I really love about the Kaveco. If I were to compare the S Pen and the Lamy, the S Pen in my opinion is slightly too thin. The Lamy is about the right size, but the shape is just uncomfortable for me. It might work great for you. It's honestly something you're just gonna have to try and decide. The Lamy definitely has pressure points. Again, I've solved for it a bit with sandpaper. Um, but I do cramp a little bit if I have to write for long periods of time. The S Pen I actually find very comfortable. It could be a little bit thicker and it could definitely be heavier. It doesn't exactly feel premium, but I haven't had any durability issues with it at all. The one thing I will say is after extended use with it, I will say it's not the best tracking pen. I would say the Lamy is better and the Kaveco is better. It is also very finicky when it comes to nibs. The default nibs that came in it were great and actually I think tracked really well. Tough to say because that's been a little while now. But the biggest issue with the S Pen is finding replacement tips that you really like. My personal favorite tip is the Wacom felt tip and sadly the S Pen just won't accept it. It will take the remarkable tips and those are good, um, but I think that's the biggest knock on the S Pen. The other pen I might throw into the mix is the Kindle Scribe Pen. And I recently reviewed that. If you haven't checked it out, I'll link it above. The hardware on that device is fantastic and the pen is no different. I think they took a lot of influence from the S Pen. It's very similar, especially from the nib back, um, but it's a little bit longer, it's a little bit heavier, and a little bit thicker, which are all really good things. If I'm micro nitpicking, I will say I find it a little weird that the button is on the opposite side. That's mostly just muscle memory. That's not necessarily a knock. But I will say the fact that it's so long and the fact that it's heavy is a little weird. The balance gets thrown off a little bit. It feels a little back heavy, especially if you hold it towards the front, which I assume most of us will. Honestly, if it stopped right here, I think the balance would be perfect. But overall, a great first pen from Amazon that's very promising. Back to the Kaveco, let's do some quick writing tests. So let's start with my remarkable So when you're holding the pen, majority of the time you're gonna be holding it in this black plastic area, and it's very comfortable. It's about the same thickness as the Lamy, but is completely smooth, so there's no ridges for your fingers to get caught on or to feel uncomfortable. You do notice that threads are here, but they're not uncomfortable in any way, and the cap becomes a core part of the pen and feels extremely comfortable in your hand. I find it much more comfortable in hand than the Lamy, even in the back. They are similar lengths when posted, but the Kaveco gets a lot smaller for travel. It does not have a clip, so if you travel a lot, I think the Lamy is really nice in that you can clip it to a pocket and never have any fear of actually losing it. But I think both of these pens protect their nibs well and will also travel well. The default nib is very unique. Reminds me of the S Pen nib, which is it's very flexible and very fluid. Feels like I'm writing with a very wet pen tip and there's not a lot of resistance, which I personally like, but that's gonna all come down to personal preference. It's very fluid, it's very clean, it's effortless. Probably my favorite nib combination. And I, I like it with most devices. So I like it with the Remarkable. I also like it with the books. Let me pull the books up. Yeah, I like it with the books as well. Yeah, also feels great on the Scribe. I have some issues with the Scribe note-taking experience, but the screen and the texture are not one of them.
The one that's a little tricky is the Super Note, which is the Super Note is really grippy. I thought it would bother me more, but I actually like it a lot. It, this pen tip actually feels great on all these pens, which is a very rare thing. Typically a pen that I like on the Remarkable and the books, I don't like on the Super Note, but this one just happens to work. Just lucky. With that said, this pen is not going to be perfect for everyone. I think the biggest thing most people are going to complain about is the fact that it doesn't have an eraser button or a true eraser. In my case, my primary tablet is the Remarkable and it has this lovely new gesture to go back. If I just double tap with my fingers, I can go back. So let's say I wrote quick with just a K, I can just do two quick double taps and erase. And the fact that I'm missing an eraser isn't a big deal for me, at least on my primary device. If I'm on the books or on the scribe, it's a problem because there's no easy way to undo. On the Super Note, this is also not a problem because of their two finger gesture erase. If I decide I don't want this statement anymore, I just lay two fingers down and draw. And this is awesome. I think Remarkable took a lot of influence from Super Note on this. It's one of my favorite features in all of Eing tablets. The other complaint someone may have is the price. It is not cheap. I think this was 94 euros, which I think after shipping was like $110. It's a ton of money for a pen. I'm very fortunate in that I review these things on YouTube and I have some budget to work with and can find the tools that I really like. I think that's one of the biggest challenges with finding the right pen. It's not the cost of the final pen that you choose, it's all the pens that you choose running up to that one that weren't quite right. Thank you so much for watching. I would love to know your thoughts on the Kaveco All Sport down in the comments. Do hit subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you in the next video.